Okay, task for the day. Meet the tribe's people and take some heat off of Kenichi's back. Oni, how can you call the Mountain King a monster? Because he hurt a lot of people. And look what happened to Nana. But it wasn't on purpose. The Mountain King is sick, that's all. He's been hurt by the abyss. That's true, but the fact remains that he's now a threat to all of us. How can you be so harsh to someone who's sick? If you don't take back what you just said, I don't know if we can carry on being friends. Toba, Huni, what's wrong? Huni's saying nasty things about the Mountain King. It's not right. He's our hero. Hmm. Once upon a time, maybe, but not anymore. <sighs> Yesterday, maybe, but not anymore. Toba? Fine. I guess my dad is right. Things change, and you just have to accept it and move forward. As of today, our friendship is over. There's no going back. Oh, come on, cut it out, you two. We have some great news to tell you. The Traveler is going to be the flame bearer for the next turn fire night. She's going to do a beautiful ceremony and cure the Mountain King's illness for good. What? Really? So that's what my dad wanted to talk to you about? To be fair, from what we saw the other day, you are pretty good at climbing cliffs. Probably just as good as Kanich. Wait, speaking of Kanich... Where even is that guy? Oh, yeah. Good question. Is he not coming to the ceremony anymore? We can get him to come. But if he catches you two fighting again, he won't be happy. He'll be sure to give you both a piece of his mind. No, we can't let that happen. I've never even spoken to him before. I can't afford to make such a bad first impression. I didn't mean to argue with Toba. All he said was that the Mountain King has done some pretty bad things. He was the one who turned it into a fight. Yeah, if you weren't friends, there's no way Toba would have come to look for the baby Saurians with you. Uh, all right. Well, because it's the Traveler and Paimon and Kanich, I'm sorry, Toba. I'm sorry for all the mean things I said about the Mountain King. Dad just really misses Nana. And I was really upset that she's gone, too. Huh? Oh. Uh. I shouldn't have spoken to you the way I did either. It wasn't very nice of me. For the Traveler and Paimon Kanich and for Nana. I'm sorry, too, Huni. That's more like it. Now you're best friends again! Guess so. Toba, if I ever say something mean about the Mountain King in the future, I'll make sure I say it to someone else, and not you. I'd better go buy some colored cloth for my dad now. He needs a return fire night. Let's play again some other time. See you, Toba. See you, Traveler and Paimon. Okay. I'll head home as well, then. See you next time. Okay, take care, you two! <sighs> Even though they said they're sorry, it looks like their friendship isn't as strong as it was before. Hmm, let's just hope we can solve this once and for all. Come on, let's move on! A rehearsal for the Turnfire Night dance. Ooh, there's a dance involved? Paima wants to learn too! You don't know it? Ah, I guess you're not from these parts, huh? It's rare to see a new face around the tribe these days. I thought everyone would be keeping away. Uh, why do you say that? Because of the Turnfire Night, of course. The Mountain King could wake up at any time. That's why we're holding an emergency ceremony. 
this isn't one of those fun and games festivals. For outsiders, it might even be a little dangerous. Well, did you know that the flame bearer this time is actually going to be an outsider? Oh, I did hear about that. It's a first for sure. I would have loved to meet them in person. What? Oh, it's you? Man, oh man. Well, this is a nice surprise. It's funny. I was just thinking that I'll probably miss out on meeting the new flame bearer since I'm not taking part this time around. Then suddenly, there you are. <laughs> Must be my lucky day. <laughs> um, you're not taking part in the Turnfire Night? How come? You're not an outsider too, are you? <laughs> you must be joking. Watch this. Not bad, right? Yeah, I'm considered one of the better looking guys who dances beneath the pillars of the sacred flame. Been doing it a few years. Always gets the ladies out to watch. <laughs> oh, very impressive. So why'd you quit? Well, I feel like the whole Mountain King situation is getting more and more precarious. It's just not safe here anymore. One of our elders' Saurian companions even lost her life not long ago. The question is, what are we going to do about this in the long term? But our leaders don't have any answers for us. They're probably too busy fighting about it amongst themselves. The way things are going, it's only a matter of time before it gets violent. So I figured, you know what? Now's as good a time as any to get away for a little while. Go do some exploring. You look a little disappointed. Disappointed? Nah, it's a great opportunity to go see the world. As every male scion of the canopy knows, wherever you are and wherever you go, the only way is forwards. We take pride in that. I won't forget my roots. <laughs> I managed to get in touch with the Saurian Relics Association. They gave me a simple test. Find a decent quality relic, and they'll make me a member. What's the Saurian Relics Association? You've never heard of it? It's a group of amateur history enthusiasts who do research on the ancient Saurian era. They're all about collecting relics and remnants from that age. Speaking of which, the guy who was Flamebearer before you. I've heard that his Saurian buddy comes from that time. A how? A how's a relic from an ancient Saurian civilization? Oh, yeah, him. So you know those two already, huh? Then do you know how they met? It was deep inside some mysterious ruin, and they signed a contract there. The association folks say that the kind of contract usually comes with a huge hidden cost. Really? That sounds ominous. Who knows? But if it's true, Kanich can probably handle it. He knows what he's doing with weighing up contracts and costs and stuff. I doubt he'd make a contract that doesn't benefit him. Strangely enough, I actually happened upon a strange mural a while back, and it looked to me like it was depicting a Saurian and a human involved in some kind of Saurian-era contract ritual. Oh, does that count as a relic then? You bet it does. I was all ready to go take a picture of it and use that as my entry ticket to the association. But after all the abyssal activity recently, I heard that area's been overrun by monsters. The best laid plans, huh? I'll just have to wait and see if things improve. Or... You look like you know your way around a fight. I don't suppose there's any chance you'd be able to help? If all you need to get is a picture, that should be pretty achievable, right? The Traveler deals with monsters all the time. It's a piece of cake. Wait, you're seriously going to help me out? Come on, it's no big deal. Compared to some of the things we've been roped into before, this is nothing. Pyro Archon above, you two have hearts of gold, you know that? You're the kind of people who could dive into the turn fire deep in the bowels of the Night Kingdom, and it wouldn't burn a single hair off your head. Of course it is. All right, come with me. I'll show you the way.
there it is. It's inside these ruins. As you can see, the place is crawling with monsters. Alrighty then. Stay back and take cover, Tiago. This could get dangerous. We'll take care of them. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I'm not about to cramp your style. or things could have gotten really hairy for him. Hey, look! That's gotta be it, right? Definitely looks like a mural. Hmm, true. Now that you mention it, most ancient murals take up a whole huge wall. This looks more like someone with a paintbrush got bored and started doodling. It does match the story he told us, though. There's a Saurian and a human... So, is that supposed to be what an ancient contract ritual looked like? Eh, whatever. We're not here to decipher it. Just photograph it. You've been robbed? Oh, Ponche. And I thought my luck was bad. Oh, I put blood, sweat, and tears into that. And now I've got nothing to show for it. Some gap-toothed goon stole it from me. Tiago, is this the picture you were looking for? Let me take a look. Uh, yep. That's the one! Pyro Archon above, you two are superhumans! Hey, Ponche! Come and say hi to these guys. They're gonna be the new flame bearers, and they're tough as nails. Wait, are you the Traveler and Paimon? Huh? You already know each other? I don't think so. My nephew Toba's been telling everyone about you. He says you're crazy strong, super friendly, that you helped him out, and that you're gonna be our flame bearers this turn fire night. Oh, so you're Toba's uncle. Great to meet you, sir. Sounds like we managed to make a bit of a name for ourselves. <laughs> Toba's not wrong, my friend. These two are honestly some of the nicest, most genuine people I've ever met. Everyone speaks incredibly highly of them. Seriously. If you're comfortable telling them about what happened, I guarantee you they'll sort it out in no time. Really? All I want is to get the fruits of my labor back. Allow me to explain. Ponche is a well-known scholar within our tribe, author of the widely acclaimed book, Yupanki's Turnfire. Unfortunately, the book was stolen by a treasure hoarder a few hours ago. I spent years of my life researching that book. I visited every last ruin, interviewed every descendant of every hero in our history. On the word Malipo alone, I covered at least five different interpretations of the meaning based on accounts from different villages. It was an unparalleled masterpiece. And now it's all gone. That little goon ambushed me during my morning walk. He snatched all of my belongings, including my entire manuscript. That book was everything to him. It's like they robbed him of his soul when they took it. Look at him. Lost and listless. He's a shell of the man he was. Dear honored guests of our clan, I am but a helpless old student. If only for Toba and Tiago's sake, please help me, I beg of you. See what I mean, Ponche? 
Now you've run into these two? Your luck's about to change, big time. I don't know if he's still there, but come on, I'll take you. back what do you want now you old bum god you're a waste of space prepare to get shoved foot first into a tree hollow oh what's this brought a little bodyguard with you huh all right let's see what you've got what's this eat first suckers Warriors, heroes, gods, and kings, I can't run any longer. Please, I don't have your stuff anymore. Have mercy. Oh, yeah? Well, where is it then? I... I threw it away. You threw it away? The old bum's bag didn't have a single mora in it. Just a tatty old book, worn out pens, and some old rags. All that time lying in wait was for nothing. I was so mad, I just threw all of it away. Hmm, is that really the truth? Okay then, where did you throw it away? The same place you found me. Look, I swear on the Pyro Archon, it's the truth. May all my worldly possessions be turned to ash by turn fire if I'm lying. Okay, that's a pretty strong oath. What do we do now? It sounds like he's telling the truth. Right. Let's hope nobody gets to the book before we do. We'll never get it back then. Although the turn fire is a heroic symbol in Hoitzatlan, it always comes with the more ominous implication of eventual tragedy. This holds true for all bearers of this ancient name in recorded history. Each one of them died of non-natural causes, as if the specter of the Turnfire was always lurking in the background. This appears to suggest the existence of some higher power that is always watching the name-bearer, examining their actions, and eventually demanding payment in return. None can escape this payment, unless, perhaps, they could honestly swear by Turnfire to never make a single mistake in their entire life. You punkies Turnfire. What an incredible work on ancient name philology. I can't believe it was just lying there for me to take. Let me see, the author is... Ponche. Nice. A gentleman and a scholar. Ugh, silence, book muncher. The great Kahula How will suffer your droning voice no longer. Do you truly find no joy at all in perusing such rich historical records? <laughs> joy? What joy is there in this pointless drivel? Well, it makes a pretty shocking prediction. Every bearer of the ancient name Malipo eventually meets a grisly end. Maybe that's the price you pay for the name that means price? What? Mm. You're saying Kanichi will die a violent death? <laughs> so I'll finally get to take over his body? When? When will that glorious day arrive? The great Gahula How demands to know! Wow, you are just irredeemable, aren't you? An agent of chaos down to the core. 
You make us abyss order folks look like saints in comparison. Uh, silence, maggot! To presume that anyone compares your kind with the great Kahulahau is sheer vanity. And if that day ever comes, oh, your doom will soon follow. <laughs> you don't need to lecture me about doomsday. Here's what I know, based on countless historical texts. All civilizations will be reduced to rubble by the passage of time. From ancient kingdoms, to heavenly thrones, to worlds beyond, there are no exceptions. But from the ruins of every civilization, the dust will rise and never settle, thus transcending the confines of time. That dust is what we call a civilization's spirit. And you, great Kahul Ahau, are one such speck of dust from a bygone age. I've paid dearly for the chance to observe you up close. Now, let me take a good look at you. We'll see whether any memories of that age still remain inside you. We're so sorry, Mr. Ponche, but we couldn't find your manuscript anywhere. Does that mean all of my hard work was for nothing? You gotta stay positive, Ponche. You might have lost the book, but the brains behind it are still intact. Surely you remember the main points, at least? The whole reason I worked so hard to get it finished before the Turnfire Night is because I hoped that maybe it might help us find a way through these trying times. But now... Well, not exactly. But I thought my research might at least be a starting point. Oh, really? So what did you find out in your research? I think the key to all of this lies in the power of Malipo. Panche, you know as well as anyone that ancient names don't hold any real power. Symbolic power doesn't count. You're right, but Malipo may be a special case. Given that it first arose in the era of the first Pyro Archon, it might contain remnants of Shibalanke's power. Yeah, I remember that story. My grandpa told it to me when I was a little kid. Maybe you're the special case. Most kids stop believing in that stuff by your age. I'm not talking about childhood superstitions here. There is evidence. Like what? Like the fact that the Mountain King is still alive. Everyone attributes that to the power of the Abyss. But there's more to it than that. The key factor is that Burkina summoned the power of Malipo at the cost of his own life. If you don't believe me, then answer me this. How many other creatures can you think of who lived longer, not shorter, after being contaminated by the Abyss? Um, Traveler, different situation but similar idea. Doesn't this remind you of the hilly... So, I came to the conclusion that Malipo must refer to some mysterious ritual involving a tit-for-tat exchange. It began with the first Pyro Archon, fell with the Grand Alliance, then was buried in the Night Kingdom. And now, it awaits the call of its new bearer. Hey, hey? <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Panche, but you seem to be getting a little overexcited. I'm sorry. I was originally planning on presenting my findings to Kanich. I'd hoped he would be attending the upcoming ceremony. Sounds to me like you dreamed up one fanciful theory to support another. Uh, Kanich, what are you doing here? I more or less finished what I was doing, so I came to have a quick catch-up. Now a good time? Kanich! I'm onto something! I haven't worked out all the details, but... But... You have to attend the Turnfire Night. Uh, so Mr. Ponche here has done a lot of research on the history of the Turnfire and thinks he might have found a way for you to solve the problem. I'll be there, Ponche. Let's go.
Here will do. Yeah. I'd like your help giving it a trial run tomorrow. If that works, we have our plan come turnfire night. Sounds like you're not considering Ponchi's idea. You heard him. He hasn't worked out the details yet. We did a more practical solution with concrete steps to follow. Yet? Are you saying you think he might actually be onto something? I think it's possible, based on something I know about the war 500 years ago. Burkina didn't fall to the abyss. He was killed by the Mountain King in an episode of madness. In his final moments, Burkina made the fateful decision to not fight back and instead pass his blood and power on to the Mountain King. Maybe he thought the Mountain King was stronger than him and more valuable to the tribe. Or maybe it was just out of loyalty to his friend. Either way, I can believe the Turnfire was involved. Whether you think his sacrifice triggered it or his fate was sealed from the moment he took the Malipo name, it makes sense to me. How can you drop these truth bombs with such a straight face? This is what I've gleaned from my many interactions with the Mountain King. His mind is so disordered, it took some time to piece it all together. The story Elder Trinidad told you was the more palatable version of events. The truth is even darker. The Mountain King's mind isn't just disordered. He is suffering and feels great shame. I believe he wants to be put out of his misery. What? Then... then what should we do? Should we grant him his wish? Of course not. We should help him move to a new home. It's the only practical solution. The Mountain King is a hero to my tribe. An object of worship, even. Ending his life would be like desecrating a statue. Still, he's been the cause of multiple disasters, and we can't afford to have any more. Ugh. Practical solutions hurt Paimon's brain. Can we follow our hearts next time? <laughs> then let's break for the day. I've already found a suitable venue for tomorrow.
Let's hope you put up a good fight. Let's finish this next time. This way is very Committed to memory. Take it easy. You're here. Very punctual. Oh, so the gruesome twosome come crawling back. <laughs> here to make amends after the gross irreverence you displayed last time. <laughs> Very well. The Almighty Dragon Lord Kahula How shall grant you the audience that you seek. Now pucker up and kiss our feet. <laughs> Kanich, didn't you say you found him a teacher? He's just as out of control as ever! Hey! No one gets to discipline the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How! No one! Maybe because I've never had a gentle-natured companion like Paimon to compare against. It... Is that a compliment? Yeah. I see what I'm missing out on now. And it's a lot. Kanich! We could drown this measly flying ant in one droplet of spit! How dare you compare her to the almighty dragon lord, Kahula How? Oh, just wait till I possess your dead body! I will commit heinous atrocities! Tear down your legacy! Destroy your reputation! Wreak havoc on your... Traveler, Paimon, let's get down to business. Once we've opened the beastly rift, you're welcome to toss a how in there for a couple of days. With pleasure, you don't need to ask twice. I got my hands on this device in a trade. It's meant as bait, but it'll also stabilize the abyssal energy. The rift towns will tear through space to get to this. Once they're here, we take them out and claim the rift for ourselves. You'll find out soon enough. First, let's try this out. They'll tear you to pieces given half the chance, so be careful. Under-promised and over-delivered. Nifty little gizmo, isn't it? I take it this is your true form? Now that our deal is complete, it's time to start the next phase of our relationship. I made a promise to the great Kahula How, and now I'm here to seize your body for his use. Cliché, I know. The hero's trusted partner sells him out to the Abyss in a shocking act of betrayal. Cue bad guy speech and drawn out death sequence. Huh? Angel? Huh? Huh? What are you two doing here? Oh, Mr. Kinich, this is not what we agreed on. Traveler, this is the gift I got you. I know you're looking for intel on the Abyss Order. So I thought he might be of use to you. But it looks like you've already met. Yikes. Frosty reception. Gotta say, I kinda pictured this moment going a little differently. T 
tears of joy welling up in your eyes as you say the words, It's good to see you again, old friend. Don't be ridiculous. Sounds like you've been reading too many romance novels. There we have it. Change is inevitable and nothing lasts forever. What a pity. Well then, time for you to meet the new me. This time, please call me Sanka. Sanka! Aha! So you're a glasses guy! You tricked Huni and Toba into telling you a bunch of stories! What does it matter? A name is a superficial label. It's what's deep down inside that counts. And I've shown you the deepest parts of me. That would explain a lot. Why else would you show up here and start acting like a wise guy? You looking for a fight? Eh, uh, I'll pass. I do rather like you, as I've said before. But my one quibble is that you really don't know your own strength. Wait, of course. You're the one behind all the recent Abyss activity. Let Paimon guess, you've been provoking the Mountain King too. Haven't I told you before? I'm not part of the inner circle who do our Highness's bidding. My interests are far more low stakes. I spend my time digging for truth in ancient doodads and books. You really think a benchwarmer like me is capable of more than that? I investigated him. He's not connected to the recent events. Just happens to be in the area. So, I struck a deal with him. He helps me summon a rift. I allow him to do some... historical research. But that's all over. And now Kinich wants to hand me over to you. While well, I was hoping this would be an opportune moment to whisk away his body. That would have given me some more time to study the great Kahula Hao. But now I've run into you, which is just my luck. Or maybe I've incited the wrath of the Turnfire, and this is the price I have to pay. But I don't understand, what did I do wrong? Wait, does that count? Hmm, let me think. How? You are the worst of the worst! Colluding with the Abyss Order against Kinich? How could you betray your partner? Uh, there is no betrayal. The almighty Dragon Lord Kahula How is a partner to no one. Don't worry, I told him to act as bait. Yes, and you should have picked a bigger fish. The Abyss Order? Ha! <laughs> What a joke. Not even a match for our lowly servant. I put up with this toad croaking for days, and it was all for nothing! It looks like your disciplinary measures have been less than effective, Mr. Enjo. Uh, what did you expect? Behavioral rehab isn't really our thing. Otherwise, we might as well change our name from the Abyss Order to the Abyss Boarding School. The abysmal disorder would suit you better. Uh, Kanish! Dispose of him! He is of no further use to us! Traveler? Hey now! I may be a lowly clerk, but don't underestimate me! I could never beat you in a straight-up fight. But when it comes to running away, I won't lose to anyone! Do me a favor, and remember how fast I disappear! Maybe then you'll show me a little respect next time! Darn! He got away again! Couldn't you have stopped him? It's alright. He's not worth our time and energy. Besides, it seems like he's in debt to a lot of people. I'm sure they'll keep him busy. If you say so. Still, Paimon's kind of surprised that you actually struck a deal with someone from the Abyss Order. To borrow that guy's words, names are superficial labels. Whether you call it the Abyss Order or anything else, it's a broad generalization at best. Think of it like apples that have fallen from a tree. If you tasted each one, you'd find that they're all at different stages of ripening. Even the unripe fruit blown off its branch before it's fully grown can still be brewed into a fine wine. Everything has its use. 
Huh. Well, in that specific sense, maybe Enjo's not such a bad apple. Not rotten to the core, at least. Of course! Only the almighty Dragon Lord, Kahula Howe, is rotten to the core and evil beyond redemption! Ugh. So what exactly are you anyway? You're definitely the evilest little thing Paimon's ever met! Don't worry. He can't hurt a fly. Hmm, you could say that. Uh, Paimon heard that those kinds of contracts might come with a terrible cost attached. Is that true? Such as a howl watching me like a ravenous vulture? 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 Ugh, we are the Dragon Supreme! Sovereign ruler of the Nation of Flame! Let's pick this up another time. It's getting kind of late. You should go back and get some rest. Big day ahead. Tomorrow's Turnfire Night. Time to light the sacred flame and burn away the filth for a legendary 500-year-old warrior. Oh, yeah. Hearing you lay it out like that is making Paimon a little nervous. For all the work we've put in, it all comes down to tomorrow night. We have to make sure we solve this problem once and for all. Then it can't hurt to say this one more time. Good luck to us both. See you tomorrow. <laughs>